today's episode, we're going to be finishing off the roofing, but we also have a couple of details we've got to finish off before we get to the roofing. You're watching Essentially Wood, a show about... Oh, come on. It's just a show about everything you need to know about building wood. What happens inside of the building? In pretty much every house I've ever lived in, it's always been curtains on the window so you can't see what's going on inside. And that's kind of convenient because if we do that on our models, then detailing the interior is not even a consideration to make. So on the rear wall of the building, we don't have any uh, blinds. But on the side walls, I want to put blinds. So before we put our roofing on, we're going to be putting on blinds and making them from scratch. And then we're also going to put the main roof on, the roof on the tip out dormers, and maybe the back roof, I don't know. We'll see. Again, I hope you like watching these videos. If there's something that you don't like about these videos, just give me a shout. Today's episode starts with us installing the roofing on all of the various dormers and the main roof itself. Now the roofing is card and I have found over time that adding white glue to card really adds a lot of moisture to the card making it brittle. Sometimes if you're looking for an, a cardboard edge, if you have it bent and it starts to expand, it really starts looking crappy. So I'm using crazy glue so that we can fix our roof to the building itself very quickly and efficiently and in a way that doesn't allow water to get soaked into the cardboard. The other reason I like crazy glue is it sets up so fast. You can't beat it. You may notice that my crazy glue has a little nozzle on it extending it and giving it a nice precision tip. I bought these off of eBay for like six bucks for a bag of a hundred of them. Great deal. Making my window blinds was extremely easy. I just painted a piece of paper with depot buff. I kind of like how the color kind of contrasts through the window and it's so you can see it very nicely in a very subtle way. Now I didn't want streaks on the blinds so I put two coats on the paper. And then I cut it up into strips and just simply crazy glued it into place. Now my crazy glue, um, there are some crazy glues that'll fog up your windows, but I have found that the crazy glue that I'm using, the LePage version, doesn't do that. And I, I have no problems with just throwing this crazy glue right beside the glazings that I had just add, added to the windows. Only because I've tested it in the past. And just like that, there we have it, a couple of window blinds and they, as you can see, they're, it's not hard to see them. I might have to trim these ones off. I'm going to take a few minutes to finish adding all the rest of these roofs to the dormers of the building. After the break, we're going to start painting our shingling and showing just how chaotic it is to get a natural look to shake shingles on a roof. It really isn't the most intuitive process and 
you know, you really have to work at it to get it wrong. Also, I'd like to point out what I consider to be a major flaw in the design of this building. And maybe if you're a manufacturer, you can see what uh, my point of view is on this subject. Today's video is brought to you by Pelican Focus. Pelican Focus is the photo stacker that makes the most clear photographs that you could ever make. To get 20% off a lifetime license of Pelican Focus, go to modelersguild.com slash HF. And we thank Pelican Focus for their support of our show. Now these videos are about how I've changed things or, you know, little details along the way. It's not like a step-by-step -step on how to build this kit. So instead of using the black construction paper to uh, install the valleys, I'm going to paint a piece of paper silver and use that instead. I'm doing that to add a contrast between the leaves that will be in the valley when I'm finished and the valley itself. In my experience, roofing can look really good or really bad by the way you paint the shingle. And for me, I like to start off very subtle and then add more detail as I go along. So I started my shingles off with camouflage tan spray paint came back with my aged concrete by Dr. Benz and then now I'm adding some depot buff to add a little bit of color to the roofing. Now what we want are streaks going from up to down and this is the streaking process of rainwater or maybe a moss going in the path of rainwater. However that in and of itself isn't enough to add texture and variation that these roofs have. So I'm gonna come back with some white paint on a sponge and just randomly uh, dry brush uh, blotches on the roof. Now, don't worry if this doesn't look right because you're gonna take each sheet of shingle off and mix them all up like a mosaic. Now it took about four days to complete the roofing on this model and I decided that it would be too boring to show you it all and also if I have to show you how to add shingles to a model then I don't know I just I just not I'm not feeling it however after adding all my shingles using slate gray mixed with alcohol which coagulated and that's fine I used that to streak the roofing. Then I came back with a charcoal gray, a much darker gray, and added that to alcohol and used that to streak down the walls. And you can see those streaks here. The streaks don't go on nicely. You have to run your finger along it to run it out, to, to blend it into the roofing and stuff. But the alcohol really pulls that into the roofing and makes it a stain as opposed to a paint so it works really well here's a shot of the, the slate gray and it totally coagulates it totally uh, looks like you just really screwed it up if this was a glass of milk you would be throwing it out but let's not throw it out use it trust me the next model is this is the charcoal gray much darker and what we're all we're doing to the roof is adding a, a highly, like, it's 90% alcohol, 10% paint. And what you're doing is you're pulling this alcohol down the roof and it's penetrating the shingle itself. And that's how I did this. After the break, we'll discuss why, number one, I didn't record the making of this roof, and number two, why I have a gripe with the design of this model. I have been sharing my scale modeling experiences on YouTube free of charge for over two years now. In that time, I've invested a lot of time and money into this project. Projects like these need funding to grow, and I'm asking for your help. Patreon.com slash Ron Perry. So what is it that I don't like so much about the way the roofing was designed on this model? Well, I'd first like to say that I think it's a great idea that the 
shingle rows were laser cut into the roofing itself and that there's th there's two-sided tape on the roofing that's great but that's not where the two-sided tape should go and I don't know what the reason is why the two-sided tape is on the roofing as opposed to the shingles anybody who has shingled a house on their own knows that you nail the shingles to the roof and I don't know if this is a perfect analogy except for the fact that like on a real roof on this roof the shingle is half covered by the row below it now when you only have two-sided tape on the roofing itself that means that only a small insignificant portion of the shingle comes in contact with the two-sided tape meaning that all your shingles stick up in the air and the solution to this at least in my shop the solution was to add wet water to the roofing to soak it down which ruined all the two-sided tape on the bottom and add my scenic glue to the shingles because I knew it was going to penetrate all the layers all the way down to the roofing itself solidifying the roof the moral of the story is try not to put your two-sided tape on the roofing put it on the shingles if you're a manufacturer and you got a nice laser if you're going to put roofing onto a building itself sure two-sided tape is going to affix your shingles for a short-term period while you get it ready to glue it at the end because that two-sided tape is only temporary i've seen many modelers many experienced modelers try to tell you to use two-sided tape and to depend on it for years and years to come i'm telling you that's a lie and they don't eat they've never i just know it's a lie two-sided tape doesn't last in our next video we're gonna tackle the boat it I jump about 30 pages in the book but the this whole roofing fiasco kind of got me all worked up and I want to build something new something it's gonna challenge me a little bit like like this boat <laughs>